No one seems to have troubled to look for the fallen mass that night. But very early in the morning, poor Ogilvy found it soon after dawn, not far from the sandpits. The impact of the projectile had made an enormous hole and the sand and gravel had been flung violently in every direction over the heath. The heather was on fire and a thin blue smoke rose against the dawn. The thing itself lay almost entirely buried in sand amidst the scattered splinters of a fir tree. The uncovered part had the appearance of a huge cylinder caked over by a thick, scaly, dun-coloured incrustation. It had a diameter of about 30 yards. Ogilvy approached the mass, surprised at the size and more so at the shape since most meteorites are rounded more or less completely. It was, however, still too hot to approach. Ogilvy remained standing at the edge of the pit, staring at the thing's strange appearance. The early morning was wonderfully still, and the sun, just clearing the pine trees towards Weybridge, was already warm. The only sounds were the faint movements from within the cindery cylinder. He was all alone on the common. Then, suddenly, he noticed that some of the grey clinker, the grey, ashy incrustation that covered the meteorite, was falling off the circular edge of the end. Flakes were raining down upon the sand. A large piece suddenly came off and fell with a sharp noise that brought his heart into his mouth. For a minute he scarcely realised what this meant. Ignoring the heat, he clambered down into the pit, close to the bulk, to see the thing more clearly. Why was the ash falling only from the end of the cylinder? And then he saw that the circular top of the cylinder was rotating very slowly on its body. He heard a muffled grating sound. In a flash, he realised that the cylinder was artificial, hollow, with an end that screwed out. Something within the cylinder was unscrewing the top. Good heavens, said Ogilvy. There's a man in it, men in it, half roasted to death, trying to escape. 